So today we are going to be talking about exponential sequences, also known as geometric. And again, the reason they're known as exponential, as you can see in the actual formulas, there is an exponent. Um, excuse me. And if you were to graph this sequence, it would look like an exponential function. All right. So this is a lot like arithmetic. So we're just going to go through and make sure that we know our differences and how to apply them. Okay, so this, again, this is the explicit form. This has got the n minus 1 as the exponent, and this is called the recursive form. Like I said before, recursive means that whatever term you want is dependent on the term that came before. So, like, if I want the fifth term, then I have to go to the fourth term and then multiply by whatever my r is. Okay, so like before, what's the same? a of n is your output. R is actually what we call our common ratio. It's basically what you are multiplying by. Okay, and that does include fractions. You can have a fractional base, just like you had in exponentials before. You can have a fractional base. So whatever it is that you are multiplying by. Okay, so what's different? Okay, so explicit depends on your first term. Right? And recursive does not. Right? So you cannot depend on having that first term to make a recursive form or to figure out pieces from it. So you got to be kind of careful. Okay? And again, the R stands for your, what we call our common ratio, just like D stood for our common difference. Okay, so that's really the only thing that's different in arithmetic sequences. We were adding, even if it was a negative number, we were adding. Um, and this time we are going to be multiplying by a common number. Okay, and so just as a statement for that one, when you were dealing with the arithmetics and you were trying to figure out what the common difference was, you had to subtract, right? Now you're going to divide. You do the opposite. So let's say you have a sequence like this. Okay, so instead of subtracting the second piece minus the first, you'll actually divide the second piece divided by the first, right? And that'll actually get you your ratio. In this case, six divided by two is three. So I'm multiplying each of these numbers by three to get to the next number. All right, so let's start actually playing with these forms. Same question. What is your first term? If you're doing explicit, what are you multiplying by? Because that's how I get my R, right? And what form are you writing it in, explicit or, rec or recursive? Okay, so this one's the same exact thing we just did. Um, first term is 2. We already figured out that our common ratio, 6 divided by 2, was 3. So we're going to write it in explicit form. Remember, that is a of n, your output, equals your first term times, in this case, because it's, this is an exponential or, or geometric, so it's like you know an exponential statement. Your base is 3 raised to the n minus 1. Okay. So... If I wanted to find a specific term after that, let's say I wanted a of 6, you do the same thing you did before, you're going to substitute 6 in for n, so 6 minus 1. So, and then you would put in your calculator 2 raised to, or 2 times 3 raised to the fifth power, right? Because we would try to simplify it first. And then whatever that's going to be, and hang on, let me grab my calculator. Okay, there we go. Okay, so three uh, times two. Answer should be 486. Okay, so now let's try one in recursive form. So recursive form, remember, looks like this. And then all you're doing is writing down what your common ratio is. So you actually don't even need your first term for this. Again, you just need the R. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. There's your recursive form. Right? And remember, in recursive form, let's say I want the third term. 
Well, that means I need the second term and then I need to multiply it by two. So I would have to actually substitute the six, that's my second term, multiply it by two to get the third term. I've got five here, what if I wanted the sixth term? I would have to take the fifth term and multiply it by two and the fifth term is 48. So a to the six would equal 48 times two, which is 96. So you actually have to build on a recursive form. You have to kind of keep going up in the pattern. All right, so let's try a couple more. Okay, so write it in explicit form and find the eighth term. Okay, so explicit form means that I have to have my first term, a half. I have to have my r value. What am I multiplying by? So remember, we do second term divided by the first term. And 2 divided by a half is 4. So my common ratio is 4. So my explicit form looks like this. First term, ratio, n minus 1. And then since I want the eighth term, I'm going to substitute in 8 for n. So 1 half times 4 to the 8 minus 1, which is 1 half to the or times 4 to the seventh power. And again, grab your calculator. So you're going to do 1 half times 4 to the seventh power. And you should get 8,192. Pretty big. All right, yeah, these numbers are going to get really big really fast or really small really fast. That's just the way they work. All right, the next one, my first term is 100. Okay, and again, my ratio, I do the second term divided by the first. And my ratio, and we do need to put this in um, a form that we can deal with. So either the fraction or the decimal is fine because this is a, um, a not a repeating decimal, so it makes it easier. So if you want to do 0.5 or a half, it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and write the formula. So 100 times 0.5, and normally we would say n minus 1, right? Now we want the eighth term. So the eighth term is 100 times 0.5 to the 8 minus 1. In your calculator, that's going to be 100 times 0.5 to the 7th power. All right, so let's put that in the calculator. And I am getting 0.78125 as a decimal. I'm not able to, on my calculator, change that into a fraction, um, but if you're able to turn that into a fraction, I would take a fractional answer for that as well. It would not matter. Okay, so that's it. Um, this is, again, working with geometric is a lot like working with arithmetic, right? You're just multiplying instead of adding, and that is it for unit five.